everyone, Jamie here from Preschool Steam, and it's been a while since I've done a live video. So I'm so excited to be back and to be able to share with you three quick STEM challenges that you can do with preschoolers. Now, I've been getting a lot of feedback that teachers are really liking the quick STEM um, challenges or activities that you can do with just a few materials. So I'm going to share three of those today that are inspired by the upcoming Halloween um, holiday. So these are Halloween inspired, but if you uh, are not participating in Halloween in the classroom, you could easily modify it even without the Halloween part. Okay. Oh, also, I'm going to show you how you can store the activities, making it really easy that you can grab um, a box, a bin, or a bag, and that you can do the activities real quick in your classroom. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Our first one is using plastic cups, and our challenge is how high can you stack the cups? Now notice, I have it. the challenge actually taped to the lid of the box. And so you can get all the materials already inside. I like to use the clear boxes so that you can see through, but you also could take a picture and put a label on it on that side. Now I like to tape the challenge to the inside of the lid rather than the outside because if you're stack boxes up, like I tend to stack more than one, um, that way I don't have to worry about it coming loose. Okay, so our challenge here is how high can we stack the cups? Now you could totally do this um, just with normal plastic cups, but we found some fun Halloween inspired ones from the dollar store. So you can literally just set out the cups and let your children explore how high they can build the tower. Now some extensions to that would be uh, they could measure how tall they built their tower. You could add a mini pumpkin and say how high could they make a pumpkin tower that they have to make the tower and then balance the pumpkin on top of it. And another extension would be incorporating um, a die with it that they have to roll a number and then build a tower with that many cups. So if we got five, then they would have to use five cups to build their tower. So those are some different ways uh, that you can incorporate just using Halloween or even regular plastic cups. Now once again, to make this easy for you in the classroom, I have all of these stored inside the plastic box. So I can put the lid on it, we may, I may introduce the activity all as a group, but then you can uh, store it so that children can revisit the activity on their own during center or independent time as well. Okay, so that's the first uh, STEM challenge. Our second one, and I'm using different boxes today just to show you different ideas. This one you can actually, you can use um, like a pencil case and store the STEM challenge this way. Once again, I take the challenge to the inside, and this one is creating a spooky shadow. So it's actually using the blocks, and we can't see on the film or on the camera, but there we go. It's just using blocks and a flashlight and creating to see if they can build a spooky shadow, or you could even incorporate it to be build a house and then use the flashlight to um, create a spooky shadow of the house. Now, I do recommend for this activity that um, children have some wall space, so maybe on the floor if you have a little empty wall space, so that they can then shine the light. And let me see if I can set one up real quick to show you. Although with all the sunlight coming in, you're not gonna see a, a spooky shadow. But you literally could just um, build your house and then you shine your flashlight and then it should project the shadow then against the blank space whether it be a wall or just um, blank side of a file cabinet somewhere that can illuminate the shadow so once again this is a real simple activity a different way to extend it would be 
Um, moving the flashlight around and can you grow your shadow bigger or smaller by moving the light? Once again, real simple, just a few materials, but definitely gets your young thinker exploring and thinking and asking questions, which that is what STEM challenges are supposed to do. Whether you call it STEM or STEAM, it really doesn't matter. It's about encouraging curiosity and making your children wonder and ask questions. And so once again, that activity I have um, packed up into the pencil case. Now our third activity is, can you build a spider web? So for this one, um, personally, I love to use the plastic bags to keep the challenges so that you can easily uh, group them. So if you wanted to set up for different groups, I could have uh, you know three or four different bags ready to go with the materials and I can just pull it out and uh, give it to the students. And one tip, is for this challenge, the challenge card is actually taped on the inside of the bag. So you can actually see it, but uh, it's on the inside to be protected. Now, can you build a spider web is our third challenge. And to go along with it, it is helpful to have actually some different photographs of real spider webs. Now, in our blog post, I've included a free download for our STEAM Resource Lab members. So if you're not a member, go ahead and sign up. It's free to join. There's no cost. All you have to do is sign up with your email address, and then you can uh, download our uh, photographs of different spider webs. And this is to help inspire um, you can ask the children what kind of lines they see, what type of patterns, how do they think spiders make the web, and that can lead to further STEAM investigations. But to keep it simple for this challenge, we're simply using Play-Doh, and if you have your own homemade, that works too, and a plastic plate and a plastic spider. Now, then the students can roll out and create a spider web. This is my five-year-old's web, and I just left it out um, so that I could share with you. But you would have, you know, your Play-Doh that the kids could take out, roll, and um, rolling like a snake, so that's building up some of that fine motor, small muscle, um, building that up as well to build their spider web. And then, of course, adding your plastic spider in. Now, I, here I recommend using a plastic plate so that you can reuse the activity, that you can easily just slide everything back into the bag. And of course, it does take modeling, just like any center uh, with young children, that you wanna show them how to make sure to get all the Play-Doh back together again, how it can go back in the container, and, um, put the lid on so you want to just model how that but then how your plate and play-doh and even your photographs can all go into the bag making it simple to have on hand that way um, like I said if you have an extra 15 minutes after a lesson or it's just one of those crazy days and you need some sort of brain break well, these are activities that you can then pull out and use. Now, I do have all the written directions uh, in the blog post. I will go ahead and put the link uh, in the comments below once I am done with the live video. If you have any questions, go ahead, post them in the comments. And I would love to hear if you have any STEM Halloween challenges, go ahead and share those in the comments as well. Well, thank you for watching. And I will be back with more STEM challenges throughout the week. Thanks.